Arms, we have a friend here with us today, Taylor. She is uh, coming today to learn about farming, homesteading, and very interested in learning what it takes to have a farm with animals on it, which is our heart's desire is to teach the next generation. Right. Mm -hmm. So, Taylor's gonna come along with us today. We're gonna feed the animals, we're gonna talk, and we're gonna let you follow along with us and uh, see how things go. Hopefully, we can give her some knowledge today. Hopefully, and we won't scare her off. <laughs> yeah, maybe it won't be too overwhelming. So follow us along as we go out and do our morning chores. Absolutely. Okay, so we're out at the barn, and uh, normally this is how we start our day off. Murphy, I mean, Rocco loves the turkey. There's no no lie. He likes that turkey. Rocco. So, um, we normally start off with our goats first. This was the original paddocks that I built, and I built, um, it's a hundred square, uh, is it feet? Feet? Yes. Um, 50 and about 50, maybe a little bit larger on this on this paddock over here. But we built it to divide the, the goats when we needed to. I started out with three babies, um, and you'll meet them. This is the two white ones, and it's the black and white one. I bottle fed them. And those are what are called Nigerian dwarf goats. They're, they're created for milk production is what they're created for. And then later... That year, I brought in the older goats that I that you see here that I've got. So, um, but with this uh, paddock, it got pretty small quick when you start adding all the babies. Okay, yeah. our most recent purchase is this one right here. Look this is this Esther. One. She is a newbie. Her ears hang low. She's yeah. a newbie. That reminds me of like my English cocker spaniel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> She's what's called a newbie, and they give great milk. Okay, beautiful. she's beautiful. So like this is Primrose, mm -hmm. that's Piper, and that's Sassy. They were my bottle fed babies and they'll love on you. They are, <laughs> they are, they are very, very, very friendly. Okay, so Ruby right here, mm -hmm. that's Sassy's baby right there. Yeah, that's her baby. This baby right here belongs to her, her mm -hmm. and his sister is probably over here. She's a little gun shy. She's, she's over there. So, okay, so Coco is the matriarch right here of the group. In a, in a goat population, there's always a dominant goat that becomes like the hierarchy. Yeah, she, <laughs> she, 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 well, they do, they bully and it looks mean, <laughs> but it's just, it's, their, it's yeah. the nature of their, their, of their personalities. But she is the head matriarch. She's actually gonna be giving me babies in October. Uh, so that's why I've got her up here. I'll be yeah. keeping her close to the barn because I want her to deliver. Now her baby is Crazy Karen. If you see Crazy Karen right there with the floppy ears, yeah. she is a half Nubian, half Nigerian dwarf. Um, she's Nubian, uh, excuse me, she's Nigerian dwarf, uh -huh. Coco is, but they, the people who owned her before bred her with a, a Nubian. So you get what's called a mini Nubian. She gives she gives great, great milk, great milk. And she actually has this little boy right here. Yeah. So, uh, so all of them you use for milk? All of them are good for milk, yes. Every one of them are good for milk. So now what's the purpose of combining the goats and the chickens? Is there a reason um, Well, the reason why we've done that now is we brought Jace's chickens over because they were getting out of their fence. Okay. And he had a, he had a small chicken run. And uh, that he had bought, and they had the turkey and these chickens, and um, they um, would get out. And up here, 
um, they would get into the neighbor's yards, and she had a cat, and she was concerned that they were going to be eight. You know, it was just a constant battle. And his backyard is pretty much closed in, but they would go through the tree line. Mm -hmm. And so he gathered them up and brought them down here, and we put them in here. Uh, for now until he can get something prepared up there. That's his turkey. I'll tell you the benefits of them there being together. Benefits. The benefits of them being together is goats have a, a, a big problem with um, worms. Mm -hmm. They can get parasites real easy because they graze on the ground a yeah. lot. Um, so, and I'll show you one of my babies that I'm dealing with. He's been, he's, he was really sick and he's a buck. I'll show you. He's over here. But, um, you have to, that's why you have to pasture rotate them. Yeah. You can't let them stay on a, on a pasture too long because then they, um, they can develop parasites and they get really sick. So you watch their, you look in their eyes at the from matcha is what it's called and make sure they still have pink color in their eyes the poop if their poop gets real runny then you know there's something going on with them but the chickens they eat those parasites so they eat the parasites off the, the worms and everything on the ground they eat that and um it helps with um with that so um they're good to be together yeah this is actually the first time that we've put them together, but it really works out, you know. But that's why we created these two paddocks over here a few, last month to rotate the girls on there, uh, on those two paddocks, and um, so that they won't get develop parasites. So how often do you rotate them? Some every 21 days okay. is a good rotation. Um, that keeps. Uh, keeps them healthy now some people don't even rotate their goats at all they won't rotate them at all and they just worm them but the problem with that is the worms they come resistant to the uh, worming medicine so you have to be very careful about that some people do worm that way some just worm when they see when they see uh, issues and that's the way I've been doing it but I, I might have to change that because I, I want to make sure I keep them healthy. When you feed goats, when you feed goats, goats have um, a very sensitive stomach. They can't just eat grain and because they'll get what's called bloat. They have a, their rumen won't digest grain easy. So they have to have help in digesting their food. So you really want to make sure you feed them a certain amount a day not too much because if they get bloated they could get um, um acidosis uh, and they could get fill up gas in their stomach and they could it, it could kill them yeah so we had uh hyper primrose got into the bucket one time after i got them and they laid like it looked like they were in a food coma for yeah. days but i was afterwards so when we feed them grain this is what's this is grain this is pellet grains and this is um, a growing maintenance grain uh is this the medicated um yes this is the medicated this is the medicated grain um now when i milk my when i start milking my girls i'll probably only feed them the sweet food mm -hmm. um just because i don't want the medicated to come out through the milk yeah but um um we feed them a mixture of the sweet feed with some corn a little bit of corn in there um and we put it out they eat it but they have to have um free choice minerals which is uh that has copper and psyllium and um, all kinds of yeah. minerals in it i'll show you that in the barn and then we have to put out baking soda when they eat that baking soda it helps them they'll go eat what they need yeah and then it'll help them digest their food okay. if you're feeding them too much grain you can see that in their poop the poop will become yeah. look like human turkey that word, it gets really clumpy. You should be seeing pellets yeah. when they feed. So we uh, feed them once a day. My, my girls that are milking and pregnant usually get more because we want them to build up enough energy to sustain the milk production and also maintain delivery um, when they when they calf. So like the little babies, they should only get like maybe a quarter to half a cup a day. Yeah. And the bigger they are, like Esther here, she'll get probably close to two cups a day. But I mean, I put it out and they just eat off of it. Yeah. So, really and right great. now we're maintaining very well what they, what the, you know, they're, they're getting what they need to get. So, so all we do is...
When you have your babies, right away you should get them scheduled to get them with, mm -hmm. by two weeks. Have them just budded. And they'll go into the vet. The vet will take a hot iron and burn, burn them off. Yeah. It's pretty traumatic. And they come out with burr holes on their head. But um, there's there's different arguments on, of people who say they need their horns. The horn helps You're keep them cool, kid. helps protect themselves. But the problem with the horns that I find is they get hung in the fence. Uh, it gets ripped off. Um, it could, they could die from, you know, getting caught or hung up on something. You know, I had one baby goat. We were had a, a hay a bag of hay in a netting hanging from this post here, and she come home and she hung herself. You know, they're always getting into stuff. Yeah. So whatever I can do to minimize them hurting themselves. I do that. But those three goats I'm trying to sell, uh -huh. I didn't get them into the vet quick enough to get them disbudded. So they're going to have horns, whoever takes those. Now, I did, he sold, the bigger one is sold. Yeah. She should be getting him this week. But all the others have been disbudded, and so you can't even tell. Yeah. You know, you could rub their head and feel the scores on their head, but um, not, not, they're all fine. You so know? now you sell goats here? Yes. As well. We had 14 babies in the month of December last year and I sold every one of them. I did keep I, Ruby is one of mine. I kept yeah. her the red one. I kept her because she was so gorgeous. Yeah. And I wanted to see and she has a different daddy than all of the others. So uh daddy, okay. but I want to take you in the barn and show you okay. how we have that set up. Um and goats hate to get wet. So um they uh so we got three in here in this barn. We have actually um uh, what we call maybe three, possibly four stalls stalls in here. Mm -hmm. That would be considered one, which is really our storage area. This would be two, three, and then this one is the big main commons area in here. If we had to pin them up, when we first started having babies, we did have mamas in here, yeah. in here, and in there. And what we normally well, we didn't do... have as many as we had. Yeah. What we normally do is... When we put them in there, I like to put them in about a week before they deliver, and then they stay about two weeks afterwards with their baby. So they get comfortable with their baby, their baby gets bigger, and, um, you know, they, uh, they, um, they just get, they get better. So, okay, so in here, you see, we have what we, what I told you, the free choice minerals. This is the minerals here. Uh -huh. It's got copper and selenium and all kinds of vitamins and minerals. And it's just, it's just like rocks. Yeah. You know, that's all it is. But they'll only eat what they need. Yeah. And then of course, baking soda, they'll eat what they want. So we keep that. Now if they pee or poop in it, they won't eat it. I have to dump mm -hmm. it and restock it. So um, we keep that for them free choice. But when Somebody's the weather- comfy. Yeah, oh yeah. There's a little bit of poop. That's old though. I don't know how, that's not fresh, fresh. But you see how it clumps together? That yeah. means that they might be getting just a little bit too much grain. Mm -hmm. So I can back off a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Um, and make sure that they, uh, they're good. But see, when it rains, they'll come in here and they'll stay in here and, uh, and stay close. <laughs> so for goats, they have to have a shelter yeah. and all that. And they do fine, they do fine. They do fine. So now y'all, you just... We built this. Eric build all this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a video of us building this. Oh, really? On our uh, YouTube okay. channel. And he researched um, the square footage of what... Um, <laughs> Esther. <laughs> Esther. Um, you sweet girl. He... What goats needed for space. And this is pretty good when we had our three. Mm -hmm. um, so right now, we have a lot... In this prop, in this space, and so that, that's why I'm moving them today to a bigger paddock, yeah. and um, and separating the boys from the girl, from the baby boys, and moving them to with the big so bucks on. There'll be a lot of wailing. Exactly. So yeah, so you have to keep the bucks separated because they breed all the time. So I have two bucks in the back pasture, and um, they they don't they don't get to get, be with the girls until we're ready for them to mate yeah <laughs> and now and female goats go into heat every 21 days um Niger, um nubians they say are not that frequent mm -hmm. 
Um, Depends on where you read it. Some of, some, some of them say 28 days. Now, the lady I bought her from says she she should go into heat every 21 days, but everything I've read said Nubians only go into heat Jesus, sweetheart. Um, about yeah. once or twice a oh, year. I'm talking about you, Miss <laughs> Esther. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about you. She ripped her ear oh, no. over there in the other paddock, and so we've had to take care of it. Oh, it's such Put a medicine on it. She's such a pretty girl. So, and, uh, so all I have to do for my goats... Uh, as far as immunizations, they get what's called a CD and T vaccine mm -hmm. um, once a year, and I weren't. Um, and then, of course, watch for worming. Um, I give them apple cider vinegar in their water to help minimize worming. I put diatomaceous have, earth down on the ground. Too. Uh, yeah, uh, on the ground to help minimize worming. Mm -hmm. They're 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 a lot of work. Yeah, and I also have to trim their hooves. I'll show you that too. I have to trim their hooves once a month, like a horse hoof, yeah. because um, they'll get too long, and if they get real long, they'll start crawling on their knees. Yeah. Well, just unhealthy for them. Or you could choose to put gravel down somewhere, a place that they would walk through frequently, mm -hmm. and that would keep... That would help. That would help. But I, I'm from the family that I like to trim mine and keep them short and yeah. keep them healthy, and that way they don't have so, issues. She, is a, she would follow us. She would go in the house with us, I think. Yeah. But... Her downfall is she got a hold of the fruit tree up there, and my mm -hmm. husband said, hmm, no, she's got to go in the fruit Okay, so this is our barn. Mm -hmm. And it was, it had one, two, three stalls that were for all the cows. The cows but, lost their home. But they didn't lose it, because they stay outside. Yeah. But we needed um, some more birthing places yeah. for our goats, because we had so many of them. And so, um, past season, Eric added two more paddocks, a uh, little stalls here yeah. for our babies to, to go and uh, to have their kids. And we put uh, boards up to keep the cows from coming in those two stalls. Right. So this is our milking stall. Uh, I'll show you. When uh, we want to bring in October Grace, we'll call her over. We'll put, we can put two good feet here to mm -hmm. hold her here if you want. But we'll open that door and call her over. She comes straight in. This is what we call it's called a stanchion. Mm -hmm. And so we lay concrete and she comes in and you put feet. You don't even have to have a lead. You don't have to lead. out and walk straight in there. And, yeah. and once she gets in here, you just pull this board over and put, a, put the pin in. Okay, you go this way. That string seems awfully short today. I don't know why. But you put the pin in and it holds her head and she eats. But really and truly for her, she's so easy, you don't have to do that. So you feed her and then Danette's on this side on the bucket, I'm on that side on the bucket, and we're, we're milking. Milking. And she'll eat, 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 eat. And when she's done, you just push her out. Mm -hmm. And see, of course, you can tell we haven't milked her lately because the spot of legs are everywhere. But um, she'll go out and she'll meet up with a herd. So, but uh, usually if we're going to milk, when she had her baby, which was Houdini, when she had her baby, we would have to separate them for the night so we'd make sure we have milk. So she, that's when she went in the, yeah. the stall over there and just ate on the grass and everything but for the night. And then we'd open the gate and she comes prancing all around in here yeah. and goes right on in. So I'll let him eat. He will bully Devlin, and that's just nasty. But yeah. I don't like it. It makes me mad. Because you see how thin he was? He got worms real bad. And so here, uh, Zeb. Zeb, come here. Come here, buddy. Zebulon. Here. Come here. I got it right here. He got worms real bad, and uh, it happened so fast that I was worried that he, he was... He almost died. He, I mean, he almost died on me. He got really thin. He had extremely runny poop. He started losing hair. He wasn't lethargic. eating. Lethargic. Lethargic. He wasn't talking, making any type of sounds. Do you want apples too? You don't like apples. <laughs> so I've been feeding him apples and just letting him graze out here, mm -hmm. trying to get weight back on him. And he is actually looking a lot better. Mm -hmm. And he's making sounds. He's more personable. I mean, before he would just stand there and he'd be like, Something's not right. But I just, I want him to get healthy. Now, in Nubians, they'll get, he'll get this tall. When he's fully grown, yeah. it'll take about two years. But we went, when we went and got Esther, her mother was so Her mother big. was so majestic and big. It was just like, wow. So this over here is my goat stanchion mm -hmm. right there that Eric built. 
is uh, where I milk and trim hooves. Yeah. Um, put them in the stanchion with feed, they'll eat. And uh, I keep their, all their medicines and everything, warming medicine and antibiotics and stuff like that is, is here. So if I need it, mm -hmm. I can uh, give it to them. And like with um, Primrose Coffin, she may have a little respiratory thing going on. I give her a, a dose of an antibiotic <laughs> if there's anything going on. I might could give her some some Nutri-Drench, which is a, a like a molasses mixture mm -hmm. that helps boost. boost their immune system. Kind of like when you have a diabetic, you know, and they need yeah. sugar. Yeah. You just give them something that help boost them. So I may give that to her today and try to help her out. You know, she's really a she's milking. Yeah, figure out. What she's problem. milking two go two babies, so her immune system can get weak from that. So this has also been a birthday. This is where April had her last baby in here and all. Yeah. I wish I could get. We could get them up here. We just have, would have to feed them sweet things. You could call them. They know that there's a word. Like when when you start yelling "soy," mm -hmm. they'll come wherever they're at. They'll come running. Okay. Good. Um, so we have them bucket train. You always want your cow bucket train. Yeah. Because if they ever get out, then all you gotta do is get bucket train. As long as you have good green pastures, mm -hmm. you shouldn't have to feed your cows in So you keep minerals out, protein licks out there and salt licks for them, and they go to those as they need them. So now you said yeah. this used to be wooded. So mm -hmm. how was did you wood what did you lay for the grass? Um, most of the time the grass will grow up. Okay. Now, um, we have done the last two seasons. We overseeded it. We overseeded okay, it okay. with some grass and yeah. some clover um, just for it to grow up. So grass typically has, for cows, is spring and summer mm -hmm. is, is when your grass grows and yeah. that's when it has all of its nutrients and minerals mm -hmm. in it. Mm -hmm. And at the end of July and August and September, those nutrients start dying down. Mm -hmm. Um, so we will plant rye, winter rye, okay. in a pasture. Like we'll close that pasture mm -hmm. off and let it grow up. The back, very back pasture, when then we'll plant rye and clover mm -hmm. and let it grow up. Uh -huh. No, 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 no. Hey, we're not doing that. Leave him alone. Um, we'll uh, grow that up so that when winter comes, they can eat on that and be mm -hmm. healthy. Because during the winter times, we have to supplement feed. We buy big old, we have huge bags we pick up with a tractor. Yeah. No, Rocco. That we um, we go and buy commodity feed. Mm -hmm. Like um, it's a sweet feed. It's a sweet feed. It's a, it's a, just a variation of different mixes for the cows. And we'll put them in these big, big old things that will feed them for a month. Yeah, there's yeah. The, 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 it's these big cylinders cut in half. But you'll see the blue one. They're out in the pasture. But um, and then of course we start bringing in bales of hay. Mm -hmm. that, that'll feed them and give them the bulk they need yeah. to keep them healthy. So that year my dad died, got, it got really cold. He died in November and in December, January, it was freezing cold. And we did not we know how to up, take care of the cows at all. We got up one morning and mom said, there's a cow laying down here. And we went down there and she was dead. We don't know why her, her hiney was bulging. I don't know if she died trying to give birth. Or, or something She's, like that. Uh, hit your, your tail, dude. Um, sorry about that. Um, but uh, so, so, and we did a video on this at one time about the losses on your farm. Mm -hmm. And then there's things you can do. No, you can Rocco, either no. just give up or you can learn from your mistakes. And so what we, 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 we dived head in on trying to figure out what they needed to sustain them. Right. Yeah. What, and really to be a good cow farmer, you're, at, you're really just a grass farmer. Yeah. You have to learn your how pastures to, have to be healthy. We don't. We if you'll notice our pastures, very minimal. Um, uh, it's called um, the weed. Um, dog fennels. Dog fennels. We, no, we make no sure they eat that. Yeah, we make sure that, that we we go through. We we they get sprayed every year, and sounds no, like they're out. Mm -hmm. I mean, basically, you know what we learned was it's 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 vital that you have good grass. Mm -hmm. And so, so they can get enough protein. Yeah. I um, mean, especially if you have birthing mamas, 
you want to make sure that they're getting well. Their fat so out. in the winter time, um, in October, we'll bring in these big old tubs uh, that have. It's called a protein lick, mm -hmm. and we'll put it out in the pastures, and the cows will lick on it when they need. Protein. You'll see these big black tubs laying around. That's um, what they are. Yeah, uh, we'll have them lick on it. They'll eat the hay, and we'll feed them the commodity feed. And then there's some grass that they can they'll graze on in between. Um, I don't know <laughs> what you're so fascinated with them for. And so during the winter times, and so then in the springtime when the grass is growing up and, and healthy for them to eat, we can cut back on mm -hmm. the hay and the commodity feed, and then they can just feed on the grass. Yeah. But you're constantly trying to make sure you have good grass growing. Um, you know, winter rye or clover or bahia or whatever for them to eat on to keep them healthy. Yeah. And, you know, and they've been healthy ever since then. Oh, yeah, we haven't lost... We have not lost another cow since then. Mm -hmm. Now, that's not to say we've had other losses. We've lost the goats, of course, some goats and, uh, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. but, whew, that when you yeah. lose something that big and then you know it was your fault, man. You don't we have about a, um, how many acres in pasture land? Total acreage, is 20, total acreage is about 27, mm -hmm. I think, including moms. Mm -hmm. The pond is seven acres. So about, mm -hmm. about right that between 15 to 20 We have acres. about 10 cows, mm -hmm. and that is an, an, enough. an acre per cow. An acre okay. per cow. So that's a good thing to know. Yeah. You, you don't want to put any more than that on your property because then, then it's going to look like this. Yeah. <laughs> they're going to eat the, yeah. They're going to eat it there. And that about an acre a cow is, is what you want. He so. is fascinated with this. Mm -hmm. He sure is. So uh, we have 10 and we're, that's about as much as we can sustain on, yeah. on all of our pasture land that they have. In fact, yeah. we're trying to get, we're trying, hopefully someone from Tennessee is coming down to buy my April, which is very devastating for me because she was my first cow and she was my milk cow and she's my baby, my baby. <laughs> and, but I asked a very high price for her just because I didn't want just anybody to get yeah. And this lady, I couldn't have asked for a better person to contact, mm -hmm. you know. And she's looking. So um, the mix is a Dexter cow, a smaller breed cow. They're they're not they're not they're not full grown. Um, they're a smaller breed. So when you have like so so April is a Dexter Jersey mixed. She's called a. Belfield. Okay, and then that's because she's 50 50. And then her daughter, we bred April with Jersey semen. So her daughter's more Jersey than she is Dexter. She's a Belmont. It's a lot of information. It is. It is. But those two kinds of breeds is people are starting to be a good demand for them. Yeah. And I've heard a lot about Jersey. Mm -hmm. Jerseys are good milk producers, yeah, for milk. and um, they look very thin though. They you think they don't look healthy, but that's just the October Grays. <sighs> we'll ride out there, let you look at them closer. Yes, October Grays gives us great. I wish we had milk for you to try, but um, it's so so good. Um, and really, we we milk her. We get it in quickly. I bought. I have this big stainless steel funnel that, and we bought these. They're filter discs that you put down in it, mm -hmm. and you pour the milk through. And that's really all I do. Mm -hmm. I don't pasteurize it yeah. because mi cow milk naturally their fat molecules are huge. Yeah. If you pasteurize it, breaks down those fat molecules, and then your body, yeah. right? Then your body absorbs those fats. Where if you keep them whole and not pasteurize it, then you just pass them yeah. through. It's yeah. much more healthier for you that let's, way. Let's go show her the hogs. Yep. Yep. So uh, now on to the hogs. We feed them a mixture of, of swine feed and corn um, in any slop that we have. Um, they eat. We don't have any slop today. I fed it all to them yesterday. So uh, we have two paddocks over there, uh, one with the baby hogs in it that are re remaining. We had six, we're down to four. Um, and then mom and daddy are over on the other side. Now the, the, the mom and daddy is a mix. The dad is what's called a um, Mangalisa. Mangalisa. He's, he's curly haired. He looks like Pumba. He looks like Pumba. <laughs> he's ugly, but he's so ugly he's cute. And the mama is a uh, York no, Berkshire. Berkshire. Sorry, I always get that Berkshire pig. And they're, they're, we're breeding them because 
one makes good has good fat for the bacon, mangalisa. the mangalisa, and one has good meat for the pork. And so we crossbred them, and that's their babies in this paddock. And then the daddy and mama are together now, and they they're breeding too. So um, um, good good meat. I guess I didn't realize that. And they will talk to you. <laughs> so this is about how big that one we just butchered was. With, with one of these siblings. Those are huge. Yeah. They're about 150, 175 pounds now. So and we're probably fixing to butcher another one. Um, they eat like crazy. And they root, of course, so you can't have a pen with pigs that's nice, well kept. Yeah. So we have is this put, corn. That's corn we put on the end of the husk. But my husband um, planted some. A, it's a different kind of corn. He let it dry out, and so he um, sat up there the other day and took the. Let it dry out. So we can get the seed on there. time we've ever bred and, and raised on our own. We usually buy a hog, mm -hmm. raise it up to about her size, yeah. three, three or four hundred pounds, and then butcher it. Uh -huh. um, but my son Jace wanted to, to try out breeding our own, yeah. and uh, so that's why we're here. Um, these pens are where they can be taken down and relocated if we wanted to. Um, we've had, where that Poop is. There was a pig pen there. Um, we've had it back, back here. here. We've had it up there, um, and we just you know rotate every time. I don't know if we'll rotate here. We'll probably keep this the same just because it just yeah. worked, it works for us. Yeah. 